Jason, Blood Church coming to you today. God bless. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We'd love to have you join us. Group of Bible believing KJV only Christians. I'm going to look today at when was the church born in the scriptures. You know, we certainly know it was after the death of Jesus Christ because the, the church and the body of Christ didn't start um, until Jesus died on the cross. So we're going to look at just a beginning verse. 1 John, we'll start at verse, um, chapter 10, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Real simple. Verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Believe, uh, believe on the name of the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. I misquoted that. So, essentially, that's the beginning. That's where you should begin as a Christian. So, if you're not saved today, obviously, eternal salvation is only through the Son. You can't get to the Father unless you have the Son, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came down as God with us, Emmanuel, walked for 33 and a half years, purposely died on a cross, once rejected by the Jews, for all Jew, Gentile, to, to essentially... Uh, be able to be saved and have eternal life. We're, we're sinners. We've all fallen short. We've committed a lie. Everybody, including myself, everyone. And you need, you're in need of a Savior. You need to admit that. You need to believe with your heart that Jesus Christ did die on the cross to allow you to have all your sins wiped out. Past, present, future sins all washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's so important. You can see that gospel at 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. through 4. Take a look. Um... A lot of people claim that the church started at Matthew 16, 18. And this is a, a Roman Catholic proof text. It's so-called. It's not. It doesn't prove the Roman Catholic Church to be right. But it's what they often use to say that, you know, hey, we're, you know, we're the true church. Uh, it's a famous verse. Most people know what it is. Um, but we'll, we'll turn there. So Matthew chapter 16, and we'll go verse... We'll go verse 18. And I didn't mark these verses, so hold hold on tight with me for a minute as I get myself to that chapter. Alright, so 1618, it says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. So, a couple interesting things. Um... And this goes down to verse 19 as well, um, 17 through 19, as I'd say where this would really sort of begin. And um, a lot of people say this is proof that there should be a pope, and there's a reason for the Roman Catholic Church, because Peter was the first pope. Peter was married, so um, he would make a really bad pope, first and foremost. But um, I would also argue that this verse doesn't mean it's really hard to interpret, just in general. Um, so first of all, the words of God, and, and all these words in this book called the KJV Bible are the words of God. We know that. And, but people think that they, that they often just read a verse and then they just, they just assume something. They, or they, they, no, they don't read a lot of Bible, but they think they can, they can teach us something. So I started with the basics of, of how to be saved because that's the most important thing to start with. But that's what, that's what often what a heretic will do. They'll start with a, sort of a difficult verse or a confusing verse like this one. And we're going to point out how it's confusing here in a second in order to, you know, make a claim. And it's usually a false claim that denies the deity of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, when you read this verse, it doesn't say I will build my Roman Catholic church. It says my church. And it says thou art Peter. So you're Peter, Jesus talking. And I will build my church. Right, and upon this rock. So is it the rock they're standing on? Is it a physical location? And that's where it'll start because that's where the apostles came from. You know, was it literally looking at when he said it, this, this and thou are different. Thou art Peter. This rock is, was he pointing to himself? I don't know the answer. So, but what what's crazy, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Against it. Okay, so the gates are the opening and closing of you know, a porter or portal, portal or entrance to hell. I can't talk today. Um, so to me, it's a strange verse because is it saying that there is a church in hell trying to open the gates and get out? 
Or is there a church that's outside of hell and the gates of hell can't go against it so it can go into hell? I know of no church that resides in hell. So I, you know, to me, is this a, is this speaks of future generation and the tribulation of the church? Possibly. And it's, again, it's something I don't understand the true meaning of. But I do know this, that the beginning of the church is Jesus Christ. It's not, it's not Peter. And I've done a video on that to, to go into those basics. But it's just, it's, it's an example of a heretic will use this kind of verse, which is a difficult verse to understand. I don't really truly know the, the, the complete picture of it because we don't know what this is. We don't know what the rock is. And, we, and certainly the gates of hell prevail against it or cannot prevail against it. Well, what church is dealing with the gates of hell? Um, you know, not, not one in this time period. So this is a, it's a difficult thing to deal with. And there's, you know, but I think there's a better verse in Matthew. Let's go to 18 and we'll go to 16, 18, 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So what you had here is a trespass in the local congregation in verse 15 between um, two people within a church. And so there was a local assembly, we see here in Matthew uh, 18, 16, because there was a dispute going on. So there definitely is, at that time, and it's same with the Jew, at the time of the Jewish, uh, other than the, the big third temple, there were, there were congregations locally, probably in somebody's house, that simply made up uh, the local church. And the local assembly, you know, whether it be Old Testament, you know, for the Jews or, you know, but at this point in time, there, you know, when did it start? And so we see it here. Let's go to Acts 7, 37. And again, it'll take me a minute to get there. But I'll be there in a second. All right. Thank you for your patience. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him shall you hear. This is he, this is verse 38, that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount, in the Mount Sinai. Okay, so... And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Okay. So so basically there there's a church in the wilderness, which was, we know, the church of Israel. So that's a church. So there's the point is there's always been a church somewhere. An assembly of, of people that, you know, prayed, worshiped God. But the mystery of the the modern day church wasn't revealed at this point in time. The apostles may have been may have been, okay doing what Acts 2 sort of, where it shows there was a church, may have been doing that before that, and just didn't realize the mystery, because Paul hadn't had it revealed to him yet. So, um, calling out starts at Matthew 10. Apostles called out. and but, the, but what would be called the organizational structure, or the, you know, the body of Christ as it's understood as a mystery, wasn't revealed yet. It's not until Ephesians. And I'm not saying that's when the church started either. I think it started about Matthew 10. If I were to guess, I just don't think they realized about the mystery revealed to Paul yet. So the church gathering doesn't, you know, you didn't have to have the mystery revealed. It was still the church of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, of course, started the, you know, my opinion on the cross, he started the church. But that mystery was revealed. We'll go to Ephesians 3, 3. If you want to turn over there, uh, you can follow along. All right, so here it is. This is, again, church, the mystery of the church. Verse 3 of Ephesians 3 reads, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5, which in other ages, in other words, dispensations or periods of time, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, and prophets by the Spirit. So you can simply, you know, you certainly can see here that, um, you know, until it was reveal, revealed, that it was a mystery. People in the Old Testament didn't know about Jesus Christ in the church, in the church age. Just like the apostles 
when Jesus died and they were trying to to figure out, you know, how to be saved. They had the debate between baptism and, and the law versus what Paul came with. And then Peter later, of course, accepted Paul's doctrine. And we have the church age, but the mystery was not revealed until, you know, until a certain point. So that, you know, but the church, it didn't mean the church, you know, wasn't, wasn't there locally in a uh, assembly, you know, before Matthew 18 or 16 or Acts 2. It just meant that the mystery wasn't revealed. And, and so, you know, it's something that I, per, you know, people dispute about that. And I, I don't, I, you know, hyper dispensationalists will say it's later on. And, you know, and, and, and you got, so you got the mid acts, those are the mid acts folks. And then you got people like the Catholic Church wanting to use Matthew 16, 18 because of Peter and, and that, this rock, you know, um, Versus, you know, thou art Peter, this rock. Well, what does it mean? I, you know, I don't, I don't know, but I, I know the church started with Jesus Christ on the cross, and I, I think it started about Matthew ten, if I were to guess, because they were assembling together, as we saw other examples. So, I hope this is a blessing to you. Just something to think about. When did the church start? Uh, it started with Jesus Christ, obviously. Uh, hit, hit that like button, subscribe, leave comments. Love to hear what you have to say in these last days. God bless.